I will repeat myself from the video earlier today. If everything goes according to plan, then this video is going to be uploaded on, let's just say Saturday, maybe 12 p.m. PST. Something like that. This video, though, is being recorded in the middle of the week because I am going on a trip and I needed to pre-record some stuff so I could do that properly. I didn't want to miss any days of uploading here. It's been like, what, three years straight of uploading at least one video a day? So today we are talking about an article that was published on Detroit Hockey Now by Bob Duff literally like two, three weeks ago. I was initially going to make a video about it then, but... A lot of other things got in the way, we started seeing more trade rumors, more updates about teams and acquisitions and all that stuff, so this topic kind of got pushed over to the back burner. And by the time I was okay to talk about it, I was like, okay, well, nobody's really talking about it anymore, so why not go out there and try to revive dead topics all by myself, my very own lonesome self here on YouTube? Today we're talking about the Detroit Red Wings and how they might have gifted the Vancouver Canucks the most productive D pairing in the NHL today. Now again, these numbers, these stats, everything is out of date. It's out of date by about four days or so. So by the time you go to NHL.com and check out the stats and see the points raised and the defenseman scoring and everything, everything I'm saying on this microphone is going to be different, but coming at this angle from the today's version of what's going on, we have ourselves a pretty interesting topic that was highlighted by Bob Duff on Detroit Hockey Now. Take a look at the piece. It's going to be linked in the description if you want to go out there and read this yourself. It talks about how ex-Detroit defender Philip Pronick has assists in seven straight games. Now, just for the update, if you wanted to see, Philip Pronick ended off his point streak to start out the season with 14 points in 11 straight games. And that puts him at a total of, what is that, 15 points on the season? Yeah, there you go. Philip Pronick in 2023-2024 at the moment of me recording this audio, not at the moment that you're looking at this on your computer screen. 18 points in 19 games. Fantastic. And the crazy part is, his D partner, Quinn Hughes, at the time of recording this audio, is the number one point producer in the entire NHL, with 30 points on the season. He has more points than Kale McCarr, he has more points than David Pasternak, he's got more points than everybody. Again, by the time this video is uploaded, the numbers are going to change. Every team is going to have played like an extra game or so, so we'll see where exactly the numbers lie there. But the purpose of this article that Bob Duff writes talks about how the Red Wings ended up trading Philip Peronik over to the Vancouver Canucks. And early returns are offering indications that the trade could be coming back to haunt the Wings. Skating in a pairing with former Michigan Wolverines defender Quinn Hughes, this duo has been nothing short of dynamic. The reason the article goes out there and says that the Red Wings might have gifted the most productive pairing to Vancouver is because, firstly, the Red Wings could have drafted Quinn Hughes. Through 12 games, Hughes, who was still on the board when Detroit was selecting Philip Zadina 6th overall in 2018, is a leading all-defenseman with 20 points in total. Outdated now. Kronik, at the time of this article's publication, was still seeking his first goal of the year. However, his 13 assists were good enough to place him fourth in the NHL's defenseman point scoring race. Attached is a tweet made by Lord Humongous of Vancouver, saying this, As far as I can tell, the highest scoring pair of defensemen on the same NHL team was the 74-75 Bruins, where Bobby Orr had 135 points, and his D partner Carol Vadney had 74 points. They totaled up for 209. If you go over to the pace for Hughes and Hronik at the time of this tweet's publication, they were on pace together for 226 points. Right now, it's around the same, if not a little bit lower. Quinn Hughes, you could say, is on pace for a tad less, and you could say the same thing about Philip Hronik. But still, these guys have legitimately been the top pairing in the NHL when it comes to defenseman points, as even at the time of recording this audio, Philip Pronick is still top 5 in D-man points. He is just outside the top 3. He is tied with Shea Theodore and Vince Dunn for 4th overall in the league, behind Victor Hedman, behind Kale McCarr, and behind Quinn Hughes. The article on Detroit Hockey Now just talks a little bit about how the pairing has worked together and how it's translated into results. It's been very good. And I will say that when it comes to the perspective of the Red Wings 
quote-unquote gifting this pairing away to Vancouver. If you wanted to phrase it like that, I'd say that Quinn Hughes very much so was a gift from the Red Wings. They could have had him. He was in their backyard the entire year because he was with Michigan, and they said, no, we'll take Sedina. And if I'm going to be honest, that honestly was the right choice at the time. Not today it's not. Hell no. But back then, you gotta remember that in 2018, Philip Sedina was so good at the World Juniors in that year that people were saying he could have even gone as high as second overall, over Andrei Svechnikov. That was such a big debate happening around the January 2018 period of hockey that seeing how Philip Sedina ended up slipping, not even just a third overall behind the Darlene Svechnikov pairing, but even further beyond that, you had Montreal and Arizona both reaching for centers which resulted in Zadina and Hughes both being available at 6th overall. The Red Wings and Ken Holland went with the consensus guy. They went with the player that people thought should have been 3rd overall from the get-go, which wasn't the wrong move from the perspective of many people watching the draft in that time frame. It's just with Quinn Hughes right there on the board getting taken immediately after, I was super happy. Like, I had Quinn Hughes number 4 on my board behind Svechnikov, Darlene, Zadina. I wanted Vancouver to get Hughes as quickly as they could, but I didn't think it'd be possible. I wanted them to get Wallstrom instead because he was more likely to be available there at 7. So Quinn Hughes, I would say, was definitely the quote-unquote gift from Detroit. For Philip Pronick, I'd feel like that's more so of just a regular old trade rather than a gift, you know? Because, like, the Canucks paid a pretty steep price to get Hronik in the first place. One of these trades where a lot of Red Wings fans were saying, yeah, okay, I mean, Hronik's good, but if you're giving us all that, the first round pick, etc., etc., then I'm totally okay with that, especially considering that the Red Wings got Axel Sandin Pelika with that first, which by proxy was acquired from the Islanders because of the Bo Horvat trade, etc., etc. You get how it goes. So at the end of the day, even though the Wings did send away Philip Hronik, to a pairing that would eventually put him in the top of the NHL in points for defensemen, or at least near the top. They also gifted Vancouver the opportunity to draft the number one guy in the NHL's defenseman points race at the time of recording this audio. Even though these were the things, I don't really think it's the worst kind of outcome. Like, sure, ideally, if you would have said, okay, copy and paste Quinn Hughes and Philip Pronick from Vancouver to Detroit, and said cut and paste, excuse me, not copy and paste, if you were to do that, is there a guarantee that the Red Wings would be much better or much worse or whatever? Like, of course they'd be better. Like, adding Philip Peronic, adding Quinn Hughes, yeah, no question. But the real questions come when you acknowledge what happens with the rest of the lineup. What happens with Moritz Sider if he's no longer the top guy? If it's Philip Peronic and Quinn Hughes in your top pairing, how does that affect Moritz Sider's development? What happens with Jeff Petrie and Ben Chirot? How much more are you able to get out of the Red Wings if the top defenseman pairing in points is on your team? Two of the top four point producers for all defensemen in the NHL in the same pair. How much is that going to impact the Red Wings? How much is that going to change their playoff odds? How well is that going to impact the power play? I'd say this, Quinn Hughes is probably the most effective power play point producer I've seen in my entire lifetime here in Vancouver. You could even debate in the NHL, like, yeah, lots of power play points, whatever, whatever, but Quinn Hughes, the way he controls the ozone on that blue line is astounding. I've never seen anything quite like it before. And admittedly, I'm pretty young, I'm only 23 years old, but there is a super talented profile here that could boost up the productivity of any power play, no matter where he is, no matter what team he's on, and no matter how many minutes he gets. Okay, you'd probably want to give him more minutes than less, but you get what I mean. So if you're a Red Wings fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the idea of the Red Wings gifting the Vancouver Canucks the best, arguably best, defense pairing in the entire NHL. I'm going to go out there and say that part of the reason that Quinn Hughes has been so good this season is because he's playing with Heronic and not with other bums that are not really all too offensively productive. Like, I'm sorry, Luke Shen. I love you, buddy. I love you, Chris Tanev. But you're not it. You guys just don't produce the points that Philip Peronic can. And I feel like that flexibility, that offensive productivity that's accessible as a defense partner for Quinn Hughes, that is something that Quinn has never had in Vancouver. So now, I mean, look, the difference between Hughes and McCarr from all these years up until now, you could say the difference between those two players was the difference between Devon Taves and Luke Shen. 
Maybe it's a lot more evened out now. Who really knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're a Red Wings and or a Canucks fan. What are your thoughts about this entire idea? Link is going to be in the description. You want to go ahead and read the article. By the way, I apologize for all the numbers and stuff being outdated. I had to pre-record this video because I'm going on a trip. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.